Hello and welcome to another edition of the Dinosaur News Center. We bring you the latest in research, discoveries, and other news relating to the world of dinosaurs. I'm your host, the Illiterate Scholar. In this edition of the Dinosaur News Center, we have birds, stolen fossils, and leaked trailers, so stay tuned. Look up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a dinosaur! No, it's... Actually, it is a dinosaur. Welcome to the dinosaur family, Archaeopteryx. I've been expecting you. The oldest bird known for 150 years is no longer a bird, but a dinosaur. But wait, there's still another side to this story. The author of the paper says, It should be noted that our phylogenic hypothesis is only weakly supported by the available data. From here on out, the distinction between bird and dinosaur is only going to get messier. The good news, we just found a new Triceratops skeleton. The bad news, all of his friends are dead. Yes, I'm sure you've all heard it about a thousand times. Asteroid impact, dinosaur extinction, blah blah blah. But there were theories that dinosaurs were on the decline before the impact due to the lack of fossils near the KT boundary. Well, this Triceratops was found near that boundary. This adds further proof that dinosaurs were not on the decline, at least not yet. Dinosaurs are reptiles, but they can survive in extremely cold climates like the Arctic Circle. So scientists set out to find out if these Arctic dinosaurs were built any differently. After analyzing the bones of 17 different Arctic dinosaurs, they discovered nothing was different about them. This means that dinosaurs or their ancestors evolved a physiology that allows them to dominate in any environment. Before I start, this next bit of news comes from Google Translator, so some of the details are a little foggy. So with that out of the way, please welcome South America's very first Tyrannosaur. Meet Nototyrannus from the back of someone's truck somewhere on planet Earth. The hard-working scientists at the General Roca Museum and Museum of Sao Paulo spent a grueling day waiting for someone's truck to break down so they could steal, I mean discover, this rare specimen. The specimen was then taken to an expert with absolutely no paleontological knowledge whatsoever. But sources say he did watch the first season of Dinosaur King. And thus Nalto Tyrannus the mislabeled Ablosauri was born. Yes, I said Ablosauri, not Tyrannosauri. We don't even know if this is a brand new species or not. For now, Noto Tyrannus does not exist. Ever heard of the story of the bland duckling? It's the story of a hadrosaur born without any special features, grew up without any special features, and died without any special features. But hey, at least the descendants would end up with all kinds of sexy crests and head ornamentations. This is Acristavus Gags Larceny from the Midwest United States in the late Cretaceous. This hadrosaur is special by being completely bland. It doesn't have any crests or ornamentations on its skull. The discovery of Acristavus further supports the theory that early hadrosaurs didn't have any crests. And it was further down the line that hadrosaurs split into two groups. What could possibly be cooler than dinosaurs riding on dinosaurs using guns that shoot out dinosaurs? Nothing, that's what. But here's the next best thing. Cowboys and dinosaurs with lasers. This is Dino Storm. It's a free-to-play browser MMO, and it reminds me of Peril World. Yes, it's a browser-based game, but considered the screens we have, I wouldn't write it off so quickly. These screens are all that's available right now, but if you want to know more, visit the official website. Dinosaur Revolution, September 4th, Discovery Channel, Trailer. New stories. New evidence. Dinosaurs. Like you've never seen them before. Dinosaur Revolution premieres Sunday, September 4th at 9, only on Discovery. From what little I've seen, it appears to be more story-based rather than a straight-up documentary, but it has a very impressive pedigree behind it. Cross your fingers and hope it doesn't suck. Now, one of the best things featured prominently on this show 
are my ninjas. What's that? You can't see them? Well, neither could the folks at BBC. That's why my ninjas were able to infiltrate them and bring you exclusive leak footage of their upcoming planet dinosaur. Now, keep in mind this is leaked footage, so some of the CGI is incomplete, and there's no sound. But I took care of the latter problem. Planet Dinosaur is basically a sequel to BBC's Walking with Dinosaurs, so it should be very interesting. And speaking of dinosaur documentaries, I recently did a crossover with Huey Toonmore counting down the top 10 dinosaur documentaries. So if you like dinosaur documentaries, go check it out. Okay, today I'm going to introduce you to a different kind of dinosaur. They are only known by trace fossils. Things such as footprints, nests, or stomach contents count as trace fossils. This is Braviparopus and species name I have no idea how to pronounce, from late Jurassic, possibly early Cretaceous Morocco. It's only known by a set of footprints, but that's enough to make it one of the largest dinosaurs ever known. It's about 34 to 37 meters long. The shape of the footprint suggests it to be a brachiosaur of some kind, making it about 21 meters tall. It makes Brachiosaurus tiny in comparison, and also dwarfs Sauroposeidon. Poseidon. There are debate on its size, the Guinness Book of Records uses an over-exaggerated number, while the smaller numbers are incorrect measurements of its footprints. What I gave you are the most widely accepted numbers for now. Alright, it's time to take a look at the mail and see what kind of questions we have for today. Do me by 2 asks, what do you think of the likelihood of Tyrannosaurus Rex sporting proto-feathers? First of all, I'd like to apologize if I pronounced your name wrong. Now then, chances are Tyrannosaurus didn't have any kind of feathers. It wouldn't benefit an animal of this size. It didn't live in an extremely hot or extremely cold environment. It's true that the late Cretaceous was much warmer than present day, but it wasn't a hellish inferno or a frozen tundra, so it wouldn't need feathers to keep it insulated. Plus, we have fossilized skin impressions, and those don't show any signs of feathers either. And that about wraps it up for this edition of the Dinosaur News Center. If you have any questions, please use the email below or at the end of the credits. Until next time, this is the Illiterate Scholar, signing off.